Good morning, everybody. Silas here today, and it's actually afternoon. But I recorded the intro to this video, and then I found out afterwards that my microphone cable was broken, and so there's no audio. And so I did say good morning in the morning. Anyway, what the game plan is, is I thought Terry was coming tomorrow when I first started this video to pick up another load of cabs, but he is not coming. So instead, Sean's here, Jason's here. We're cutting up a bunch of just kind of scrap trucks that maybe Terry bought the cab off of, or we cut them up for art and they have motors left on the frame that I want to save the motor, or maybe there's a piece of a cab, just odds and end pieces like that. And so we're trying to process those. That way we can take all of the frames and the scrap iron, stack it out back out of the way and make a little bit of room. So anyway, with that, let's get busy working. This old truck here is kind of deceiving. At first glance, it looks really nice. And then you get up close to it and you realize it's a rot box. The cab corners are gone. Then you look at the door. The door is rotted out up here real bad. You open the door, once again, it looks deceiving. It looks pretty solid right in here, but then you look, rotted out there. The floors are rotted out. You look up, the visor's rotted out. You come over here, it's rotted out here. Then when you actually look closer at the steps, it's rotted out all along the bottom and up inside the door pocket. So uh, unfortunately, this truck here is probably just gonna be art. It does have really good color on it though, so this will be premium money. I'll be able to get out of this for for art purposes. Then once we do that, it's got lots of other good parts that'll help other people restore their vehicles. It's got all sorts of good dash parts in it. It's got good chrome uh, spears on the fender, all sorts of good stuff. And it's kind of interesting, somebody put air ride seats in this thing. Oh, and I forgot to mention that it's got a 261 under the hood that still turns. So that'll be a pretty good piece as well. So it's unfortunate that that one has to be parted out because at first glance, it does look really nice, but underneath that paint, it's hiding some pretty serious issues. So today we're out in the field, so we're using all our battery tools. I've got my Sawzall. Sean has his impact and his whiz wheel. I know you guys love the name whiz wheel. <laughs> That's just what we call them around here. You guys know the problem with using battery tools is, is eventually your battery goes dead. And I've got my charger. You guys know I have my big power station, but that's really overkill for charging batteries. That's good for running my air compressor, running my big tools, things like that. So what do I do when I don't want to lug a 50 pound unit out in the field? I use my Gulu GTX 300. I've already actually got it powered on. Put this right on there. Now it's charging. And you can see it's putting out about 17 watts, 22 watts. It'll go up a little bit higher. And it stops out around 70 watts is what this charger uses. And so this here is more than capable to charge batteries like this. It's a 300 watt unit. It's got AC, it's got DC power. It's got two micro USBs. It's got the quick charge USB, the regular USB, all sorts of plugins on it. It's a handy little unit. And not only is this what's gonna be powering today's video, but this is the sponsor of today's video. You guys know I have used Gulu products in the past and I absolutely love them. 
and I kind of wanted a smaller power station that was a little bit lighter. This thing here is not just a little bit lighter, it is a whole lot lighter than the other one that I use. And so this in here is gonna be handy for things like this when I don't need a big one and I just wanna charge a few batteries and that's all I wanna do. Or if I wanna plug my phone in or my watch in or something like that. I'm always carrying cameras and microphones and it's handy to be able to charge that stuff on the go. And also, if I start camping a little bit once the weather starts warming back up, this will be really handy to take with me. I can plug lights into it. I can plug my chargers into it. Maybe a small heater, things like that. I think it's gonna be a handy little unit, but uh, let's get back to work and see how it does. Just about ready. Get that last mirror off, then we're gonna pop the cab off of it, and we'll finish pulling the motor. All right, I just switched over to my second battery on the charger over here. It's been on here for a minute, but we're at 91%, so it dropped at about 7% to charge that first battery. Still says 3.7 hours of charging time. That's if I was to run this continually. Normally when we're out here cutting and stuff like that, we won't ever be charging continuously. Just when we need it, we need it. And then when we don't, we don't. So. You're looking at around four hours of total time if we were to charge batteries non-stop. So that's not too bad at all.
And there we go. I think we're about done for the day. Got that one sitting there. Got those two cabs up there out of the way. Worry about processing those later. They're both just good for patch panels. Both cabs are a little bit too rough to use. We got this frame. We got that frame. We got this frame. We got that frame over there. For those that don't recognize it, that truck there is the one from in Nebraska. <laughs> What's left of it anyway. There's no cab, no front clip, and now no motor. And good morning. I was so worried about charging all my power tools yesterday that I completely forgot to keep my camera charged and it died on me. So we worked out here till about dark and at that point in time it was starting to get really cold which it's much colder today than it was yesterday but we've got a lot of work to get done today so i'm back out here it's actually not that early it's about 10 o'clock and the reason why i'm so late is i happened to drive by an estate sale sign and i thought well i'll just stop in there and see what i can find i ended up spending almost an hour there <laughs> i've got this whole box of good stuff here now when you're at an estate sale and you've got a lot of people there trying to buy stuff sometimes you don't have time to really thoroughly look stuff over sometimes you just got to take a chance and buy it and I think I did pretty good on this box, but let's go through it together and see how I did. First up, I got this old airplane trophy. I'll set that there. What somebody will do with that there is they'll take that off of it and they'll be able to reuse that. I gave $3 and what is that, 50 cents for it? But anyway, I should be able to get pretty good money out of this because this is all metal. This is an older one here. So uh, that should, should bring pretty good money online. I gave $5 for it with everything in it. The wagon itself is worth pretty good money. I looked it up online and not, I say pretty good money. It's like 25 bucks for the wagon. So I can probably get about 25 bucks with for it. I'll throw all this stuff in on the deal. So uh, that's a pretty good deal there. Make about $20 on it. Some of this stuff I'm not gonna sell, I'm gonna keep. So I tried to buy enough other stuff that I can sell the other stuff, make some money on the deal. That way I don't have anything in the stuff I keep. Like that there, that was 50 cents. I figured why not? I'll throw it in with my other toys. Got all those toys up there. Okay, there's a bunch of camera stuff in here. Now, most of this was downstairs in the basement, but this was out in the garage. And I actually found this stuff first and then found this later. But this is probably the deal of the day right here. I didn't really look it up, but this is a gigantic lens. I'm gonna have to get it out of here with both hands. And there it is, that's a 400 millimeter lens. Uh, I forget the, it's the same brand as one of these cameras in here. Uh, Minolta, yeah, Minolta. This is a Minolta lens right here, and I looked it up online. This is about a $200 lens. I gave $13 for it, so definitely a good deal. The only bad thing is, is I kind of want to keep it. I'm not really into vintage photography or anything like that, but I'm planning on building an office fairly soon, and I think just because I'm always dealing with cameras and YouTube and things like that, it'd be really neat to have a display of old cameras and camera gear. So I don't know. I may sell it. I may not. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Got this old Calamar camera here. Gave $6 for it, and it came with a lens. I don't know why that one came with a lens and the other one didn't, but probably just because this says Calamar on it. And then I bought a bunch of just random lenses out of there. See, I didn't really have time to look them over and see what condition they're in. I'm hoping they're all in good shape. Here's an old lens here. I gave $5 for it. I believe this is actually a Minolta. This goes to this camera as well. Here's another old lens. One of these goes to the Minolta. I think I gave, yeah, $5 for that one. And here's another old lens. Once again, I gave $5 for that. That's a Telesar. And then here's a Minolta camera. I gave six, I just dropped my box. Luckily, nothing was in there that wasn't protected. But anyway, I gave $6 for this camera here. Now, the lens, there was nothing on it, no cover or nothing. So I'm hoping everything inside is still okay. I'll have to look it over a little bit better later. I picked all this stuff up for 50 cents a piece. I collect Kansas and sunflowers and things like that. Pretty much anything with a sunflower on it, I collect. Once again, once I build my office, I'm going to make a sunflower display in there of license plates and signs and knickknacks, things like that. And for 50 cents a piece, I couldn't really pass them up. And then this was there and I was there and it was 50 cents. So I guess I own it now. I almost forgot about these. These are just a bunch of random filters. They are free. They came with the stuff since I bought all the camera stuff. They went ahead and threw these in. Then I've got this piece here. This is really cool. And let me find a place to set it down. This is a really neat Umig. Uh, Vin Vionette, Vionette 8, something like that. I don't know. Just a really neat camera. That's one there. I gave $5 for it. I'm definitely going to keep that one. Zoom Reflex. That's just a really neat old video camera. And I just, I just think it's neat, especially with me always doing stuff with cameras now. That's definitely one there I have to hang on to. If I can get out of the case with one hand without breaking it. This is an old Fleetwood Transistor 6. Very, very cool piece. And what did I give for this? I think it was $8. Yeah, $8. This is just one of my favorite pieces I got out of there. I don't know why, I just love the look of it. And I gave $8 for it. Honestly, it's probably worth somewhere between $40 and $60, I don't know. This stuff here, 
I may or may not keep. I may sell this stuff here, but for sure I want to keep this long lens here. And I say for sure, I mean, I may go ahead. So I may just throw it on there for the full $200. And if it sells, it sells. If not, then I'll keep it. But I'm for sure going to keep the camera, the video camera. And I'm for sure going to keep this for myself. So that's what $5 and $8. It's $13. And then I have $3 here. So about $16. If I sell just one thing, if I sell this here, I'll make enough profit off of this to pay for all the stuff I'm keeping. And then everything else that I sell is just money in the bank. Altogether, I spent about $70 and I'm not figuring like absolute premium dollar, but I'm not figuring low dollar either, but just kind of an average. I figure there's probably about $500 worth of stuff here. So that's not bad for an hour of my time. Now it's probably gonna take another hour, hour and a half to get all this stuff listed, but still it's all stuff that I enjoy. And so you make time for the things that you enjoy. And I don't enjoy pulling parts off of old cars and things like that. I enjoy chopping them up, but I don't enjoy pulling parts nicely. And so that's why I don't do that. But this stuff here, I've had people in the past ask me, well, you always say you don't have time for this or that, but then you go to swap meets or garage sales and buy stuff or auctions and buy stuff. And the reason why is because I enjoy that. And so I'll make time for that. And you know, at the end of the day, how's that Bon Jovi song go? Uh, it's, it's my life. I don't know exactly how that song goes. <laughs> but anyway, I'll do me, you do you. Anyway, going on, like I mentioned earlier, this video is sponsored by Gulu, the GTX 300. We used this unit all afternoon yesterday. We put about five or six hours on it. Now we weren't using it continuously. It was kind of off and on. But you can kind of see it's down to about 54%. And actually it was at 53%, but I plugged in this morning for just a minute just to see how long it would take to charge it from 53% to full. And it was a little under two hours of charge time to get it completely full. That's about typical. I was pretty impressed with it. I think if we used it all day long, we would just about run the battery dead. But that's charging my batteries, my power tools. Like I say, that unit draws about 70 watts. So if you were just uh, hooking up an LED light to this or you're charging your uh, laptop, or you were charging your phone or other accessories, things like that, this would definitely, definitely last you for several days. I've got my big unit that I'll probably use more at the junkyard, but for when I go camping and other light duty, things like that, this is gonna be my go-to unit right here. One of my favorite things about it is that it doesn't weigh hardly anything. My other unit's 50 pounds. This thing here doesn't weigh anywhere close to that. This is, I need to look it up exactly, but if I had to guess, that's probably under 10 pounds. I mean, I can pick it up with my pinky. It doesn't weigh hardly anything. That's probably more like seven pounds. I've caught catfish bigger than this thing. It's a great little unit and also they are very affordable and right now they're actually running a Black Friday special so you can get an even better deal on one. I'll put a link in the description if you guys are in the market for something small like this that you can use for camping, things like that, check them out. And even more than camping, if you're someone like me, if you're maybe you're a content creator and you have a lot of cameras you take with you, I'm gonna carry this thing probably in my truck just because it's so small and lightweight because I've only got two charging ports in my truck. And so I can charge my phone and one other thing. And a lot of times I have about five or six things that need charged. I've got my drone, I've got all sorts of stuff. And so with this here, I can keep everything plugged in and keep everything charged. That way, if I'm driving around filming multiple locations, I've always got batteries. It's a handy little unit and thank you to Gulu for helping sponsor and make my channel possible. They have been a big supporter of my channel almost since the beginning. I really do like Gulu products. I use their jump starters all the time and I'm sure I'm gonna use this unit all the time as well. With that being said, I guess I'm gonna go back outside in the cold. I got a guy coming here later today to pick up a couple old cars. Sean should be here in a little bit. We're gonna cut up a few more old trucks and pull the cabs off of them. Front clips, I sold a few motors. I don't know what all we're gonna get done today, but we're gonna do the best we can do.
strapping it all down. Another good load headed to a new home. This old Chevy here is pretty rough, but boy, it's got a lot of good parts on it. And it's a one year only car, so a lot of this stuff only fits this year. Good windshield, good back window, got a pretty good hood on it. The uh, trunk lid is workable, it's got a dent in it, but it ain't all rusted out like they are a lot of times. I guess the engine is a 327 and it's original to that truck. It's date coded correctly and everything. And it's got a five speed on it as well. The five speed is gonna go separately, but the engine is sold. We're gonna cover it up in plastic now. I'm not sure exactly when he's coming for sure for it, but it's not supposed to rain or snow anything in the forecast anyway. So that'll keep it plenty good. I think we got just enough time for one more truck. So we got this old GMC here. I got the door sold already. And then it's got a pretty clean GMC engine in it under the hood there. So we're gonna go ahead and knock this one out, pull the cab off of it, finish pulling the fenders off of it, pull the motor out of it, and then the rest of it is just scrap. And one thing I realized that I've never realized before, but GMC and Chevy have different axles under them. See how this is five lug front and rear? Chevy's are 10 lug, like that there. They're 10 lug on the front and five lug on the front, but on the front, the wheels are usually 10 lug as well. They just put those little uh, caps on there.
and good beautiful morning we are back it is monday morning now friday night we worked so late it was pitch black outside by the time we left here it was so dark and i thought you know what there's not even a point in trying to record at that point in time you could barely see my face but anyway we got that cab off i think you guys saw me pull that cab yeah i, th I filmed that then we pulled the engine off of the truck and i set the engine aside we took all the engines and we covered them all up a couple of them are stuck already anyway but anyway i've got all these frames sitting around now and got these cabs got all this stuff sitting around i gotta ooh, that sun's bright i'm probably gonna work on gathering that up actually i don't know if i'll do that today or not but that won't be in this video anyway there's kind of an open area back there by the fence line i think i'm just gonna take all these chassis and just stack them back there i don't know if the neighbors will appreciate it or not but if you guys watch my videos on my other channel, you'll know that my neighbor over there bulldozed a part of a camper across the fence line onto my property anyway. So uh, my my uh, value of his opinion isn't very high already. So I'll worry about that another day though. Right now it's absolutely beautiful. So I'm gonna get busy doing some other stuff. Before I close this video out though, I just wanna talk one more time about this Ghoulie unit right here. I took it home and I was gonna charge it up. We ran it completely dead on Friday on purpose. I made sure to run it completely dead. And I was going to take it home and charge it, but I already know it takes about two and a half hours to fully charge. It'll do an 80% charge in two hours, and then it takes about half an hour for it to charge up the remaining 20%. But I just wanted to test it out, so I just plugged it into the truck, and it took just over three hours to fully charge from dead to fully charged in the truck. So that gave me a really cool idea. This will be perfect for when I go camping because I can use it at night to charge my laptop, to charge my cameras, my batteries, my phones, all that sort of stuff. And none of that stuff really draws that many watts. So honestly, I could probably get at least two nights, if not more, of charging out of that. But regardless, every day when I get in the truck, I like to go mushroom hunting and I like to go fishing throughout the day and I just travel around the area while I'm camping. And so what I can do is I can just throw that in the truck, charge it, and then by the time I get back to the campsite that evening, it'll be fully charged again. Super handy, and if I was in a place that I just have absolutely nothing around me, you can hook solar chargers up to that. I'm just never stationary long enough to use solar chargers. I think it's a great little unit for stuff like that. So if you're in the market for something like that, definitely check them out. Link will be in the description. This is a very affordable unit and they're running a really good deal on it for Black Friday. So check it out. Speaking of which, this video will actually be coming out on Thursday, on Thanksgiving. Today is Monday. Normally, you guys know I'm pretty far behind on my videos. They're about three to four weeks behind. But this video here, I actually kicked it in gear and I will have it out within just a couple days. So as you're watching this, it's probably Thanksgiving or within a couple days of Thanksgiving. So I hope you either have or had a fantastic Thanksgiving. I hope you had a good time with your family. With that, I'll let you all go. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day, whatever day it may be that you're watching this. And remember to get out there, find an adventure. We'll see you next time.